Good morning and welcome to our 33rd session. This is uh, Samir Mehta introducing uh, our uh, very interesting session from the broadcast studios at Mount Sinai Hospital. Uh, we begin uh, the note on a somewhat solemn note today. We've uh, lost a wonderful, a great colleague, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Hotzler, over the last uh, two weeks. Uh, our very deepest uh, condolences uh, to his uh, family. Uh, Jeff was a remarkable interventional cardiologist uh, without uh, whose guidance and lead and innovative work uh, some of us uh, may not even uh, be doing the procedures uh, we do. So we send our deepest condolences to his family and may you rest in peace. Uh, this is session number 33 and the second uh, session with our Chinese simulcast. I am also delighted at this stage to welcome our uh, interventional colleagues in uh, mainland China and in Hong Kong. Specifically, there are two groups I'd like to welcome this morning, Dr. Zening Jin from the Be Beijing Anzen Hospital, as well as Dr. Shuyang Zhang from the Peking University Medical College. Uh, on a congratulatory note, uh, Samin Sharma and his team needs to be congratulated. We just got the results from the New York State uh, 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 details on the interventional cardiology and once again uh, Mount Sinai heads uh, the number one list uh, for its volume and the lowest in the inappropriateness uh, criteria. Uh, almost 13% uh, for the rest of the country and less than 3% at uh, Mount Sinai Medical Center. So with this, uh, Samin, let me welcome you and your team uh, uh, to the live webcast. Uh, I see Anu there. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Good morning. And actually, um, as you rightly started, uh, the, um, our interventional community is uh, devoid of one legend, Jeffrey Hartzler, uh, very innovative, who really pushed after um, Andreas Grunswick. Really, uh, he was the man responsible for pushing the field of interventional cardiology. I give you one anecdote. And I really, uh, the, back in 1992, uh, Jeffrey Hartzler visited Mount Sinai as a visiting professor. You know, we call a uh, visiting professor once a month, and uh, they uh, and they have interaction with the fellows, uh, show the case presentations, and then give the evening controversial lecture and discussion. Now, I became attending in July of 90, and he visited in beginning of 1992. That's the era we only have DES. There were no stands available, and uh, at DCA. that uh, sorry DCA uh, directional coronary atherectomy even rotablation did not come. And only was the Gian Turco Rubin stent, uh, and of course, uh, other stents were not available. So, this is the case had a three vessel disease. The patient had a cirrhosis and uh, didn't want to go for surgery because of extensive three vessel. Everybody thought should go for surgery, but did not. But back in my, uh, I call it a young uh, interventional attending days, this patient has total nine lesions. And of course, uh, I did a DCA of the LED and um, RCA and stent uh, the balloon of many lesions of the circumflex. There was one OM, uh, medium size, about 80-90% left. So eight lesions I took care. Now guess what? The fellows present the case to Jeffrey in the afternoon. And uh, after uh, they present the case, he said, uh, actually first comment of uh, Dr. Hartzler was, he said, wow, I never knew that Mount Sinai does such a good intervention. Uh, that was such, uh, we all, Mount Sinai was known for more clinical cardiology, but not for interventional cardiology. Then fellows ask, okay, Dr. Hartzler, what would you have done different? He said, well, then they, they told that, you know, Shamin Sharma did this. They, you know, I say, if you ask me what I would have done, I would have taken care of the ninth lesion also with the balloon angioplasty. So just to say, the legend in his own, and we really will miss him. He has been very innovative in this field. Absolutely With a great man, Samin. Just to recount another uh, great story of his sense of humor, uh, I was uh, privileged to be on a panel with him with the live case. I will not tell you who was doing the live case. And uh, we had been doing DCA, complex PTCA. The patient was very uncomfortable. They were trying all sorts of medications. And then the interventional uh, operator proudly said that uh, now everything looks all right. Uh, uh, the patient is quiet, uh, things are going fine, and Jeff says, uh, live on TV, is he alive? <laughs> so just a remarkable man. Uh, we, we wish his family the very well, a legend truly lost. Uh, Samin, congratulations to you also. Some good things happening with your uh, volume and uh, 
uh, the complication rates uh, being the lowest in New York State again. No yep. surprise to me. Right. I mean, I think uh, we can start with the slide exactly on those two points which we have been focusing and one is the appropriateness of the PCI. That uh, at least we have some guideline by the appropriateness use criteria and do PCI inappropriate, maybe in uncertain, but avoid in inappropriate. This was my uh, ACC uh, uh, webcast last year uh, and uh, basically we knew the data from the N ACC and CDR of 500,000 patients that acute uh, coronary syndrome PCI is done in 71% and elective PCI in 29 very important that rarely inappropriate done in ACS because of the guidelines, only 1% or so. But elective PCI mm -hmm. is 11.6%. So if you think about the 1 million PCI, of them about 400,000, 500,000 will be stable and 11.6 inappropriate and the insurance companies or Medicare decide not to pay the institution that it will translate into about $180 million savings to the country. So therefore, this has been on the focus. Now, so much so that now we actually have the data and of course, we have been promoting this back in 2010 from the New York state where every PCI is counted by all their features and so with the outcome and, and these are the data just came out for 2010 discharges and the New York state versus Mount Sinai hospital appropriate, uncertain and inappropriate and you can see here that while 13.4 percent inappropriate for the New York state is 3.7 for Mount Sinai. Now you say, well, should you be proud of it? I would say probably will, I will be proud when we'll get that number will get to about 2 percent and I guarantee you in 2011 when we'll get the report of 2011 will be around 2 percent. Some cases will be done inappropriately. Part of that is because they are not counted in that grid like patient who is having VT and you are doing a diagonal intervention, patient does not have unstable angina, but those kind of rare cases uh, will be not counted uh, or will be counted as an inappropriate in this uh, graph. More importantly, as you can see, Sinai, the way we have our system, we actually have a higher scrutiny. The majority of our patients were 62.3 percent were stable compared to 37.4 uh, for the state. And uh, the most of them give uh, provided the data so that non-rateable for the state was 27 versus Sinai 13.7. Just to say that in all the way, the majority of cases were basically uh, rated and uh, have the lowest, of, of course, uh, you, uh, that uh, some percent will occur, the lowest inappropriate with number should be two, about 2 percent as well because now it has become part of our equation. We started the program of the appropriateness by January, February of 2010. More importantly, as you mentioned, that we also have the data. New York State publishes the data of the individual PCI centers and so uh, that uh, for 2009, again, our lead from uh, comparing institution is about 2,000 more interventions by our various programs and reputation. And more importantly, that you come, they give the report of three years combined and give risk adjusted mortality rate. And you get a double star if your risk adjusted mortality rate is significantly lower than the statewide and you get single star if it is high. Now you can see with this slide, very, very obvious that 5,000 plus more intervention done with the lowest complication double star in two categories of all cases and non-emergency cases. As you saw that last year when we showed the slide of the 2008, we got double star in all three categories which is very rare but clearly just to te testify again, highest volume least inappropriate by the guidelines and the best outcome and of course in addition we'll know the other individual outcomes of the CVA, need for urgent bypass surgery, stent thrombosis that they will provide us in about for three, four months later and we'll show you that data when it's available. So just to come back to this point that uh, yes, Sinai is a very busy lab. Uh, we have a lot of attendings who come to us and uh, bring their elective cases but at the same time doing a most appropriate in the cases in this day and age of the PCI scrutiny. With that note, I think we start this uh, this morning's case uh, with a uh, brief uh, history. Uh, the case uh, was done by Anu a few weeks ago. A patient had the prior PCI of the LED and RCA and then presented with the crescendo angina beginning of uh, this month and had a cath which showed left main bifurcation and because of the syntax score of 23, which is our uh, plan that we take the patient out for heart team discussion and particularly left main disease patient has that for discussion to enrollment in the Excel trial. Patient with multiple risk factors, so very importantly, has a mild cirrhosis, uh, uh, child class A, 
uh, and esophageal variceal bleed in the remote past with the hepatitis and on a very strong antiplatelet therapy of as aspirin clopidogrel which has been he has tolerated so far but we are always concerned about uh, bleeding in these patients who have esophageal varices and on a strong anti um, hypertensive medication. Now basically the angiogram which I'm uh, going to show to you it's uh, uh, left main disease and uh, with a syntax score of uh, uh, 23. So Anu you want to take the angiogram? Yeah, <coughs> if this is the LV gram which is uh, normal and if you see her uh, RCA which is again non-obstructive she has a stent which is a uh, patent um, multiple prior inter this is her left system um, her osteal uh, LED looks away. okay but uh, di uh, distal uh, sorry uh, osteal uh, left main is okay distal left main which involves uh, osteal LED and uh, osteal circ then uh, the circ itself uh, her um, OM moderate disease in the osteum but LPL has some significant disease again is a small vessel this is her LED her previous stents are all uh, okay she has a in segment restenosis of her uh, prox uh, LED going up to the ostium. Yep uh, and uh, mild, therefore mild, mild to moderate calcification at most and a sharp uh, angle of the circumflex would be the two things which struck me there. Yeah, there is a mild calcium at the ostium right. and this is kind of case not a heavy term tack which we know that you can take care with the high pressure or by the um, our um, the cutting uh, you know angiosculpt or uh, flex tome. The goal will be the intervention of the still left main bifurcation because patient was taken off the table there was a hard team discussion Excel trial or so but surgeons declined because of the child uh, because of child class A uh, liver cirrhosis felt that we can do a PCI and this is why patient is here. Uh, for uh, intervention. Therefore, now question comes because of the cirrhosis and so and uh, avoiding if possible the two stent versus one stent approach and of course, it is an appropriate case uh, at present. Now, with that note, I clearly uh, start with the, uh, the, the technical issues uh, by Anno. One is the gu guide catheter selection. You see the guide keeps coming back out yeah. here. Yeah, I think uh, in this situation the question what kind of guide you would use in uh, left main, austere left main. Uh, if we are doing osteal maybe you can just use a FL then comes if it is a distal left main depending on how the LED and the circ take off um, you if there is uh, you know the angulated circ you would uh, probably need some support to get your strength down there in that situation uh, I think a VL guide uh, would be better otherwise okay. uh, even FL guide for distal left main without any uh, um, circ or LED angulation. Therefore osteal lesion you will prefer say that FL uh, curves will be the better good ones yeah. okay uh, the, the next question is same uh, before we do the distal left main uh, intervention uh, well again what is the stenting strategy before that uh, I think plaque modification is very important uh, at least you need to do if there is uh, no heavy calcium uh, you got to do cutting balloon of uh, both the branches and uh, then do the stent placement. So, many times what will happen is if you have an angulated circ uh, the cutting balloon will not make a turn the flex tome will definitely will not make a turn you may have to pre dilate with a, a regular uh, uh, semi compliant or a non compliant balloon and then do a cutting balloon. So many, you will get a, a expansion with a non compliant balloon but still try to make an attempt to do a cutting balloon so that uh, atherotomy is done at that uh, non iotostial lesion. So, your stent expansion is good uh, uh, at that particular uh, area. So, plaque modification is very important many times if you have not done a good plaque modification you place the stent and uh, you have even with the multiple post dilatation you may not get a good stent expansion just at the osteal LED or most often you see it in the osteal circumflex. And then clearly if heavy calcium then rotablation. Yeah, if heavy calcium you have to do rotational atherectomy. Now the question is same do you always need some kind of imaging to get uh, optimized results uh, uh, would be good to do it uh, with IVUS or OCT more important is uh, I think if you have to make sure that the stent expansion is good uh, at the left main IVUS has I always know. been the standard. Um, now the, the optical coherence tomography is now being used in clinical practice uh, we still do not know uh, you know what are what are the uh, guidelines and what are the parameters that we need to use while uh, doing OCT uh, since it has not been uh, uh, all the parameters has not been still 
uh, published yet. Okay, on then have you done anu? anything on so far? Uh, we actually did the op OC yes. Anu, straightforward. I'll let you answer on the OCT, but there are uh, two immediate questions from somebody in China. We are trying to locate the name, but uh, they have gone through our iPad application. The question is: Are you planning to use Rio Pro in addition to Angiomax, and is there a role for intraortic balloon pump in this case? Okay. Uh, uh, Rio Pro, if you go back to the same, <coughs> this patient, uh, if you take her clinical history, uh, she has, has uh, cirrhosis, uh, history of esophageal varices, her platelet is uh, uh, still on a bar, yeah, 114, uh, she was just about 100 last time. Taking a clinical scenario, absolutely no. Somebody with that kind of known risk for bleeding would not be using uh, Rio Pro. Uh, and the question also is, well, she was already put on dual antiplatelet therapy. Once I think you have dual antiplatelet therapy and we know she, uh, platelets are fully inhibited, there is no need to use Reapro unless there is a, you know, procedural complication that may happen. Uh, and the other question is same, uh, need for IABP. Since she has normal LV function, EDP was uh, just, uh, we checked the EDP bar was uh, 18, slightly on the higher side, which is uh, probably because of diastolic dysfunction. Uh, in this uh, uh, straightforward uh, distal left main. If we need, we may have to give some uh, uh, vasopressors, but uh, uh, no need for balloon pump in this case uh, since uh, LV function is normal. Yeah. Going back to... And, and uh, I mean, question is in this case, you want to be sure that your um, clopidogrel is fully effective. So the Plavix has been patient is already on. There will do a acumatrix device, although we know the trials of the Gravitas and Trigger PCI did not show, but uh, again, the taking the case by case basis, high risk patient, left main, already have stent in the LED. So this will be a good case. Uh, the we used to do about 10 to 12 uh, platelet inhibition per day. Now maybe we do one or two, and this will fit into that cr criteria. And from my point of view, uh, that uh, you need to get appropriate therapy. Now question is, if it is not inhibited, what are you going to use it? Are you going to use a prasagrel effient? Absolutely not. In this case, if it is not inhibited well, and PRU is more than 230. I would uh, go uh, with the Ticagrel or uh, Brillanta. Anu, you were telling us about the OCT. Yep. Actually, the, in this particular case, we already have done the OCT, if you can uh, show it. The question is, can we do uh, optical, let, yeah. yeah, let it run. run. And maybe we'll show it in the end. It's very fast. It takes few seconds. There's a Sharma's device, although don't use it much, <laughs> but it uh, works very fast. So if you see that, actually we started at the mid LED where you see the stand, you can actually see the, uh, yeah, stop there. Yeah, so now if you start seeing, this is where uh, it starts. So you can see the stand struts, nice uh, intima there. Stand is nicely covered but until you come to one small branch. Yeah, uh, cross-sectional area is still uh, good. But this is what is happening is we are reaching the proximal portion of the LAD. And it did this portion actually you have more intimal hyperplasia. So well, that's why you can call it an in-segment. So if you see that we got a cross-sectional area of uh, 3.0. Um, a part of the strand strut that is not covered, probably a, some branch, again LAD. Austral LED. The wood, I think it going, going back to here, say that there is no stent in the Austral LED. No, right. no like stent in the. Yeah, off? Yeah, okay. it's off. Absolutely. And uh, then, images. if you yeah. see the lesion itself, you can see some uh, lipid. Now, what are the, I mean? Can we do this in every? So this is what happened. Is if you, we truly want to see the left main, we could not do that. Uh, what have, while you're doing OCT, very important, your guide has to be engaged in the vessel and you need to uh, inject the dye. The way it works is that you, the, the blood has to be replaced by the dye, so you have to inject really hard. Uh, we use the assist device here to do that. You may give off between 15 to 20 cc of dye with real force. So in patient, if there is a tight lesion, you may not be able to get the OCT because there, there is no dye going past to the tight lesion. The OCT catheter uh, fills the lesion, and in this particular case, we can, could not get the 
distal left main since the guide has to be engaged. You cannot leave the guide in the ostium of the left main because there is no way the dye can get into the LED. Uh, and other thing also many times distal left main ostial LED what can happen you have the blood flow coming from the circ that mixes with the dye. So, uh, we may not be able to see also. So, uh, if uh, ostial lesions, distal left main, ostial circ, we may not be able to get a good image with the OCT. So, here if you see we are coming to the guide and uh, you still see the distal left main if you can see that. There is a guide and then you see the distal left main. Uh, we, we, we measured is like 5.8, uh, but we actually had the IVS that we did last time which we got it like 5.5. And show us uh, on the uh, OCT, how does the lipid plaque will look? Well, we know for the uh, IVAS, it looks uh, uh, very hazy, yeah. but, uh, w which will be uh, one of the pictures. So, because that always intrigued me that I can see the intimal hyperplasia, but how does the lipid plaque will look uh, and uh, or may for that matter calcified? No, yeah, calcium you see nice, uh, uh, you know, defined borders, but here little uh, haze here, all this, uh, this is calcium. Right, uh -huh. this is calcium, and here this haze look. This one, this one, this one, is all lipid. I see. Okay. Yeah. So Good. Uh, so the same uh, haziness. Anu, how does uh, when you are talking about uh, the problem? Now here, see well-defined border. This one. Right. This is what is calcium. Many calcium. times you can see the uh, back. The thing is, uh, penetration is not as good, but yeah. what happens is whatever you see. Yeah, uh, you see it really well. More important, I think, when you really have to see the strength, strength strut, and strength uh, strength strut, uh, strut coverage is um, excellent with the OCT. Okay. Anu, what about the use of guiding catheters uh, with side holes? Does that make a difference? Yeah, definitely, because your dye will go uh, all into the main. You need the blood replaced by the dye, and when that is when uh, it is uh, automatic, uh, it gets activated and. Uh, uh, just in seconds, the entire pullback happens. Excellent, uh, Samin. What yeah. are the things you need right. to cover yeah, clearly today? And uh, and I, the, therefore, you know, a lot of work being done now in the field of OCT. That can you replace it by saline? Because one of the region is the uh, that giving the dye and clearing the fluid. But can you replace it by the saline or so? That has been a major, you know, many development. The fluorescence uh, being used for OCT. Of uh, you know, uh, few frequency domain, a lot work being done, OCT, micro OCT, fluorescent OCT, and so there. But this field will continue to evolve. Region is very high resolution, as you can see it here. Compared to 100 micron for the IVAS, it's a 10 micron. Mm. It can tell yeah. you the plaque thickness. Only problem is the depth. Fibrous because gap. Of it has to fibrous because the depth, thickness. it has to be so much contact. Yes. The, uh, the fluid, uh, the clearance, there cannot be blood in between. So once we start having a little more development on this field, this is going to excel and hopefully by that time we'll understand uh, because some consensus document is coming by various definition as defined by OCT, uh, supposed to be in JAC this month. Okay, now while Anu will get ready, may, meanwhile, uh, getting the uh, cutting balloon and uh, of the uh, circumflex and uh, trying to uh, see it and we can get the IVAS ready also. I'll go quickly with the two important points. Uh, one is the comparison of the newer DES, particularly with the resolute integrity we just approved. And secondly, uh, quickly some points on the left main bifurcation intervention technique. Now, as you know, that we just got resolute integrity approved last, uh, last month after the trial, gone through with the US uh, resolute trial. And uh, Sinai was one of the part with uh, Michael Kim being the principal investigator. Um, and so, and basically, the uh, this stent comes with a lot of promise. That is because it is the cobalt chromium alloy stent which have been used for both bare metal and so, uh, and um, for Endeavor. Then micro track delivery system better and zotero-MS anti-proliferative drug. Now you say, well, what is the difference then in the Resolute versus uh, Endeavor? Endeavor has shown by repeated studies that slightly higher intimal hyperplasia, and therefore. What you can do in these cases, uh, 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 in the this new drug design uh, and the uh, polymer. Basically, it's a biolink polymer, and very important characteristic: the slow release of the drug over 180 days, and that is what is a very important uh, illusion by 180 days. And therefore, this actually uh, is a plus point and uh, has translated into a lower, more effectiveness and lower intimal hyperplasia uh, in uh, with the resolute. Uh, and the studies. 
Now then, comparison in terms of the promus element, these are all third generation stent in my opinion. Promus element, Zion's prime, and, uh, and the resolute integrity. As you can see here, that there is some theoretical basis uh, of a better uh, deliverability because of the sinusoidal design of the resolute. Uh, clearly, you, uh, although I would say the promus and the Zion equally comes good, but in tough situations, very angulated, uh, this uh, sinusoidal uh, physiology uh, will help uh, to get the stent delivery. So it makes it very, very flexible. Uh, and of course, the stent comfortability, uh, uh, conformability uh, with the angulated lesion because the sinusoidal design of the resolute integrity uh, does not open up the cells. So that's a plus point and uh, have a better stent uh, uh, vessel coverage. Now, initial trial, which was published by Dr. Leon and uh, Alan Young, of um, 1,400 uh, cases with 1,376 evaluable, showing the extreme safety, as you can see, with the MACE rate of 5.5, TLF of 4.7, target lesion failure, and stent thrombosis of 0.14. There was one case of 30 day, and another case between 30 days and uh, uh, one year. So that two cases stent thrombosis in 1400 patients making it a 0.14 stent probable or um, the definite stent thrombosis. And you can see overall excellent outcome. And uh, there they are actually compared against the, uh, the historical which would have been 6.5. So the clearly stent did very well. But really it comes out to be when you do a comparative trial. The two comparative trial at present randomized because I usually talk about the randomized, uh, randomized trial of the resolute versus Zions. First one was resolute all comer trial, as you see, uh, numerically lower death rate of 0 0.08. As you can see, You'll the numerically, uh, yeah, not but numerically lower stent, uh, lower death rate uh, in uh, with the uh, resolute um, DES compared to Zions, but Zions had a lower uh, probable or definite stent thrombosis of 0.3 versus 1.2, which was statistically significant. But point here is, look at the MI, TVR, and MACE, exactly identical. Now also they showed that even if you have a stent thrombosis higher with a zoteral MS, did not Drop. translate into a cardiac death, which is the star. The clearly, yes, there was higher stent thrombosis, but did not now lead to death. And we know it, right? that overall death rate was non stent the, had a trend towards lower death rate uh, in the resolute all comer trial. Now they presented the data of the two years, and you can see here, Again, curves remain identical no. and stent thrombosis gap diminishes 1.9 to 1. Now, p-value becomes 0 0.07, no longer significant. But clearly, just to highlight, that seems to be by resolute all comer trial, there is identical outcome with a trend or with a no. definite lower stent thrombosis uh, at one year and the only trend at two years. Now, then there is another trial from Netherlands which is uh, all cases uh, intention to treat all acute coronary syndrome and all patients. And that is a one year outcome of uh, the randomizing patients with the resolute versus Zions, about uh, same 1400 patient and showed that identical outcome of the death MI, TVR, TVF and MACE and stent thrombosis now actually is slightly in favor with the resolute point one, point 0.9 in resolute versus 1.2 uh, in uh, uh, in uh, Zions, so that 0.3 percent higher. The, the, what was noted in the resolute all comer was not seen, and these are the data in terms of uh, the outcome of this stent thrombosis. So basically, if you sum it up, sum it up, basically it seems to be that exactly identical outcome uh, with stent thrombosis in one trial significantly lower in the resolute all comer, but in the 20 trial uh, is identical. And of course, the individual subgroup shown here. Then of course, I showed this slide earlier of the platinum. The one-year data showing identical of the platinum chromium versus cobalt chromium uh, and the two-year data will be presented end of this uh, month uh, in the ACC. Now, second point is the left main bifurcation. We all know about the Excel trial which has been taken off with the 165 international, in, international sites uh, with left main one, two or three vessel with a syntax score of 32 or below, 2600 patients, half to Zions prime and other half to cabbage with three-year end point of the death, large MI or stroke at a median of uh, three years, and of oh. course, major secondary endpoints and the registry will answer the question. We already have randomized two patients at cent oh. our center, and we have put four patients in the registry in the Excel trial so far. Then question comes with a two stent approach uh, versus one stent. You want to put a one stent if there is a side branch uh, has a lower uh, small vessel or uh, has an insignificant disease, but many times we need to use a two stent approach. And what my goal is, 
that just to highlight very clearly that relationship of your side branch size and the lesion and the main vessel decide which technique do you use and seems to be the kissing or culotte will be for the large uh, vessels with the disease significant and if it is insignificant disease then of course you put a single stent across and say small vessel then probably crush or T stenting. So overall uh, this is what uh, uh, I have uh, we will try one of these technique in this particular case and now Anu has done some pre dilatation and she can show us uh, what has been done. Anu? Uh, Samin yeah. in the meantime in there is a quick sir. question from uh, Dr. Oliver Boisier from the Philippines, uh, he is assuming uh, also I think correctly that uh, you are using bivalirudin. His so question is are you following the ACT and what target do you keep? Yeah, we uh, the ACT was uh, 320. Yeah, we, uh, we, what we do is you give a bolus, bolus we actually give uh, uh, once we have uh, access and we have used uh, done the arterial sheath we actually give it uh, in the sheath though you know the it has to give intravenous we give intra arterial bolus and then there is a drip that is going. Uh, you wait 3 minutes and after that you do an uh, ACT at the uh, ours was 320. After that we uh, usually do not check it um, uh, unless the, there is a need for it. If, if the ACT is less than 270 based on the body weight sometimes we do give one third bolus but otherwise um, you know mostly just with the uh, bolus and uh, with the drip we get the ACT uh, about 290 usually between 290 to 320. Yep. Now coming back to the point do you need ACT check with the uh, with and the bivalutin answer is just not. to say not by theory but just to say that drug has gone into the body will be rarely in acute situation your IV is disconnected infiltrated and so so therefore it is a good practice to do it but coming back to that point now. And what else so you done now? Say quick. Yeah, so we have, uh, have a uh, fielder wire in the circumflex and a run through wire in the LED and the question is same because of uh, the need for a dual antiplatelet therapy in this yes, patient. We, our go goal would be not to do a double stent uh, in her case uh, if at all the, she has a risk of bleeding. We, uh, what and we planned was that uh, can we do a single stent uh, strategy uh, with a stent. Uh, knowing that the stent comes up uh, in the in the LED almost up to the ostium, can we stent with a single stent strategy into the circumflex? In that situation, uh, since our goal would be not to stent the ostial LED, uh, first thing you do is you predilate the, uh, the yeah the branch that you know where you are going to stent. So this was a circumflex, and as uh, expected in her, you see here I had trouble in getting the. Um, if you see uh, the cutting balloon into the circumflex. So in the uh, what you do is uh, pull or you get your uh, um, cutting balloon back, reorient it, get your guide in and the next time it went in we were able to get it down. Uh, at 10 atmospheres you see a good expansion but still at the true ostium at the lower surface there was not a good expansion. You pull back into the little bit more proximal and at 12 atmosphere we did get a good expansion then we did the cutting balloon of the LED and uh, this is where we are now. So yeah, now the flex show, tom, she has used a flex tom. now my question is in this particular case since we are putting a stent across I would like to do a little better job at the ostium of the LED. Now we have we use a flex tom before now this is the wire LED wire no this is the circ wire sorry yeah therefore we are using now 3.5 10 millimeter angioscalp and uh, try to open the LED more. Now we know that 1 or 2 millimeter of the ostium of the LED does not have a stent but that is okay because once you put a stent across and then you do a kissing balloon dilatation you will expand your left main and circ stent cover the ostium. So the stent 1 stent becomes 1.1 or 1.2 and will cover the ostium very well. 3.5? So I mean uh, post procedure you will interrogate this with IVUS or OCT? Uh, we will interrogate with the I, uh, IVUS. Post. Because what you want to see the distal left main more clearly? Uh, yeah, but okay. the same I told you we won't be able to see it well with the OCT. Exactly. Yeah, right. That's the reason. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Good. Go up. Yeah. 10, 12. Good. So you this is the angioscalp 3.5? Yeah. Yeah. 3.5, you want a 3.5? 3.5. Five? Five. We will use a resolute uh, integrity. 20? 3.5, 20. 16 or 20? Yeah, we will try to do this because we will put a stent across from the distal left main to the circ 20 will be good. Uh, you may huh? go up to the 3.5 maybe too 16. big no for the circ. Yeah. 
as we do this 18, uh, 18. transmission 18 once have, again doctor, I'd like down, right? uh, our Chinese viewers be sure that you click on the left side for the Chinese simulcast and at this moment I am also delighted and honored to invite uh, good. a good friend uh, and his colleagues Dr. Uh, Professor Yevgeny Shlaktov from the Almazov Center in St. Petersburg, Russia. Dr. Shlaktov, welcome. Now, this is the, now with the advantage of the angiosco, angioscope is that you can go to high pressure. Uh, and uh, while cutting balloon uh, or flax storm, you can go only 8 or 10. But uh, that does a little better, in my opinion, uh, of the cutting of the ostium. Uh, and uh, therefore here 18, you can right? go to yeah uh, that you can go to a high pressure and this is what we did uh, that while we use a 30 flex storm we went up to a 10 atmosphere and we did a 3.5 angioscope for the LED and went to a 16 atmosphere so I mean in the excel trial flak modification is left to the discretion of the operator right that's a very important they allowed it because that was the biggest concern you know many of these bifurcation trials are not allowing us a plaque modification we are the lead enroller on the Triton side branch study uh, and there they do not allow you cutting balloon or uh, angiosculpt or rotablation. So that has been a major issue in many of these uh, trials so that at least in the, uh, in, uh, in the patients uh, uh, in uh, uh, okay. yeah. I wanted to change the wires. Okay. That, in, uh, that in, uh, in the Excel trial it has been left to the operator and actually what they only think they want to change uh, in uh, is that try to avoid a big long proximal carina uh, and therefore V stenting is allowed uh, and um, and of course uh, uh, the, the rotation atherectomy in the calcific lesion but more importantly to me the rotation atherectomy used maybe in about 20 percent of cases but uh, but cutting the angiosculpt or the flex tome uh, more so just the isolated lesion of the osteal circ or osteal LED using a flex tome gives you a very good uh, results angiographically and good stent expansion. What is also allowed in the trial? Uh, can you use your discretion for IVAS or OCT? Yes, actually they IVAS or IVAS, FFR. IVAS or FFR, and there are sub study of the IVAS sub study, and so, but uh, they they is not mandated. But what is mandated that if you have moderate left main disease 50 to 70, then you have to have IVAS or FFR. So that is what really mandated. Now see that if so uh, they having a same Anu change the wire from the fielder to the uh, run. Um, run through, but even then, uh, the stent is having a little tough time to no, go this in. Is but I, th I think it's also the angulation yeah, which is absolutely. Yep. But this will go. Asking the patient deep breath and little of uh, good, good, good. Went in no problem. Exactly yeah. how you had predicted. Yep. Uh, yep. So this is good. the resolute stent. Yeah. How many this of these have you used already now, Samin? The we actually quite a bit. We started using uh, for last one month. And uh, the because come up to the ostium? no few millimeter. In. Let's take a picture. Yeah, therefore I think we don't need to come to the ostium because there is a good nice rim, uh, is completely fine, uh, and uh, and actually have been done a, a very good uh, success uh, at present. Of course, the long resolute of 32 and 38 will be available later, but uh, it is working out very good uh, in uh, in our lab so far. Okay. Yeah. Go, back. go. Go. Huh? Go. Up, go. Up. Go up. Now therefore, now the key is that you still have the wire behind the stent struts, which is sometimes uh, maybe an issue because you already have a stent there. But uh, we actually safely have left uh, many of those uh, uh, wires Good. behind. Done. Go negative. Same uh, 12 atmosphere. We need a high pressure balloon. Give so, us a. So your strategy for yeah. the resolute is exactly the same for the for the yeah. zines. Zines, yeah. They just don't go to a very high pressure. Uh, just about 12 to 14. And if need to be, and they should be post dilated. Now, also, which I did not mention in my um, the, uh, the presentation, that final kissing balloon dilatation. That if you have put a, a two stent approach, uh, and or you put a st one stent crossover, the Excel trial mandate that you should do a final kissing balloon dilatation. Now, we know the Nordic bifurcation uh, two trial did show. Uh, I mean, I Nordic bifurcation three uh, showed that uh, kiss or no kiss was no different. But they have only 7 percent of cases in the trial were the left main. So this was not a left main uh, trial. So the all left main cases, while I would not do a final kissing balloon for LED diagonal bifurcation, putting a stent across the diagonal and everything looks good. But in the left main, 
uh, we always, I mean, that has been my policy, and that actually mandated by the trial that you need to do a kissing balloon dilatation, and I think this is the right approach. So now you've got three excellent newer drug eluting stents. Uh, have you been able to figure out uh, which stent will you use for which lesion? <laughs> That's a very good point. I think uh, this gives us tailor-made approach that where whichever you want to use, and uh, particularly the flexibility, I would say uh, the the uh, the resolute uh, integrity will get a little plus point. Uh, then from the elastic recoil point of view, very calcific lesion. I would say the our um, the promus element will take it and uh, others majority one of the reason being is because of the 33 and 38 trio. millimeter trio. which is cost Thank effective you. the three of uh, that uh, that because of the uh, 33 and 38 millimeter availability uh, of uh, of uh, uh, the uh, Zion's prime uh, which you know so the good lesion coverage and save you money rather than using two stands uh, is uh, remains uh, uh, the commonly uh, used uh, DES in our cat lab. So, so that absolutely yeah. no role today for any of the older DES? Absolutely not. Gone. Gone. Now only question remain is the ion we do carry some and th those who have a restenosis of the limus drug uh, because that is a paclitaxel and um, uh, the cobalt, uh, the, the, the platinum chromium that cases which have restenosis, repeat restenosis of uh, uh, of our um, serolumous drug, those patients are getting your recross the wire. Okay, that those cases uh, are getting um, uh, you know r b the uh, getting the ion. Now, now what uh, Anu has done, that took the wire out, recrossed it, and now we have. And we, we have a three O. This is a regular yeah. fifteen balloon. Okay, three O fifteen. Semi compliant. Yeah. Uh, yeah this is in the LED. Yeah. Track. Track. And, and then uh, we have our high pressure but three five fifteen. Let's open this first. Okay. I you always, know, once you go, you're, you're open the strut. Now, many times right. people try to use a high pressure. In this situation, we'll have a tough time to go through. So, go so with the compliance. It's a very important point that yeah. when you are doing your kissing balloon, uh, many times you can try. If you already have a balloon that you use for pre-dilatation, uh, you can use the same balloon, but uh, often it does not cross. But definitely do not use a non-compliant balloon to cross uh, uh, the side branch. Um, and particularly if there is a stent already there. Yeah, yeah. I think a non-compliant balloon can go sometimes, but definitely would have a tough time if you already have um, the stent in the side branch. Means if you are opening a new balloon, try to open a semi-compliant balloon. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, you'll have a lot of struggle. Yeah. Samin, an excellent question from a very dear friend in uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Dr. Carl Carlos okay. Nieves. Wow. He's asking, could you have considered T-stenting approach the left circumflex first? Uh, well, I mean the T stenting means uh, in this particular case, knowing there is a very small gap at the austral LED, then I would have the could have been fine that you put a two stents simultaneously with a T stent approach. Yes, and the idea was basically we may still need it, very small stent at the austral LED. This is the why. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the uh, small stent at the austral LED uh, because if that is required, then we'll do a tap technique, uh, which is the intentional T protrusion of the LED stent into the left main and they do a kissing balloon dilatation. Uh, this is, we try to avoid our simultaneous kissing stent in this particular case, largely because of this uh, platelet count and uh, liver cirrhosis that if in case you need to stop the drug, uh, this is uh, not the right one um, uh, that you want to, uh, we're ready? Wait. Yeah, keep telling them what the Car balloons are. Carlos, delighted to have you on. Okay, Hopefully so we your are fellows are there too. Yes, Anu, yeah. go ahead. No, no, we have our 3-5 uh, uh, non-compliant balloon, which is in the circ, and 3-0-15. Uh, Both are 15. Yeah. Go up. Yeah. So, uh, so many times what can happen, some, uh, sometimes uh, if you are doing LED diagonal or even in your left main and you know the side branch is angulated, you may have to take a shorter balloon to do your, uh, to recross it. You take a 15, does not go, you may have to change to a length of uh, maybe 2 or 12, 8. Cross first, open the strand strut, and then you open go with your. Uh, both of them back. Yeah. yeah. Go up again. No, we made. We don't yeah. to make sure. Yeah. Good. yeah. Therefore, many times the stent will slip even yeah. uh, with a kissing. So you just have to be careful. Go slow. And this is the angle is the one we needed to open. Good. For the circ. Okay. Good. Down, down. Your uh, balloon yeah. slipped a little. Again. Yeah. yeah. Again, again slips. Slip. So I Samin, I have a series of three exceptional questions which have come yeah. regarding unprotected left main 
or 100 percent of your cases work through a hot team or 100 percent of your cases syntax guided and are 100 percent of them IWAS guided. Very good. The very simple uh, 100 percent of cases are syntax guided and that leads to the hard team discussion if the syntax score is 23 and above. So answer two questions. The if it is less than 23, we would not call even surgeon, go ahead and do the stent. If it is more than 23, comes out, have a discussion, unless patient has the category which is inoperable, CVA, COPD, limited life expectancy, that patient will not have a hard team discussion, will, will be kind of a syntax registry, PCI registry and will go ahead and do the stent directly. And I was guided, I would say that about 15% of our uh, left main are I was guided, so very small. So the 100, 100 would be 100 percent for the syntax score guided approach of which lead to about, I would say, we do about 25 to 30 uh, unprotected left main every month. So that of that, uh, about 50 percent will be in this category of the syntax guided, more than 23 and hard team discussion, other half because of inoperability or patient have been referred to me, especially for left main intervention because we get a lot of referrals, our, most of our uh, the left main cases come from our uh, the surrounding institution, not from even from Sinai because is our established what we are done in the community, uh, patients are referred for left main intervention. So that I was, a uh, lot of people use I was quite often, but you do I was, uh, that, but we actually not very big on the I was guided left main, but as if based on the data, if you can say that which lesion would you do I was guided and what the data support would be the left main based on the data. Otherwise, you know, in the DES era, we yet to have a trial of IWAS, which will show, which has shown benefit of the IWAS guided PCI versus no. We have the uh, about eight randomized trial uh, in the BMS era, which is half and half or maybe 60 percent favor the IWAS and 40 percent did not. But in the DES era, there is absolutely no study which have shown except the Parks left main registry uh, have shown uh, that if the patients with the left main where the PCI was done with the IWAS guidance had a lower mortality in addition to a lower MACE rate. So that uh, although little higher revascularization uh, and uh, balloon dilatation and so, but key is that yes, I was, uh, but otherwise other DES trial, the AVO and so did not show any benefit. So that the case of the IWAS, uh, now we are getting little more, uh, particularly some of the cases we do a pre uh, using the, New the, uh, the pre uh, using uh, some of uh, our OCT cases. But uh, the IWAS is not routine in our lab. Samin, more questions from uh, Japan this time. Dr. Masahiko Satoda, can we use run through wire in both LAD and circumflex in this case? And can we draw or pull the run through wire jailed by the stent without any problem? Right. Actually, the, what we have learned, and this is what we published um, in uh, one of uh, my interview, uh, that we have had a little trouble sometimes the pulling back the run through wire. Uh, and uh, we try not to jail the run-through wire by other hydrophilic wire and BMW, we have no problem. But now some cases we still have uh, the jail the run-through wire, but I avoid, try to say do not jail the run-through wire and uh, other wires uh, are okay. And of course, if there is any problem, you bring a balloon and uh, try to pull the wire out and has been a no case uh, of uh, a wire breakage. We actually had total two cases of wire breakage in uh, last, uh, let's say, seven, eight years in Mount Sinai. Ten years. Uh, uh -huh. 10 years. In 10 years and those cases were all technical mistakes because one wire curled up and investigator, the operator no, no, did yeah. not realize. So it has to be, uh, I mean, uh, when they are doing it, you've got to be ma uh, making sure that your wire in the side branch is not curled up. Yep. Uh, it's curled up making a U or it is a, uh, a squiggly like a spaghetti down in the um, side branch and then you're trying to take it out. Uh, we, you may have trouble in doing that. So before you jail it, make sure your side branch wire tip is uh, straight so that you'll have no problem in uh, uh, taking it out later. Uh, yes. And, and the circumflex is looking excellent there. I am still not convinced that the ostium of the LED is no, maximum. No, LED actually looks very good. Yeah, but no, yeah. You, you may be right. Yeah. We are going to do the IWAS and, and uh, we, we may require a high pressure 3.5. Well, remember, we have opened the ostial LED only with the compliant balloon at 18 atmosphere using a track. But uh, we uh, and um, uh, that we may need to go to a non-compliant high-pressure balloon for the ostial LED. 
In the meantime, I have noticed something quite uh, unique today and uh, uh, truly Good. gives a no. sense and no, a perspective no. to the okay, reach ready? of our uh, webcast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, what, what is it? We have received five questions today and the questions have been uh, from China, Japan, uh, Russia, Philippines and Puerto Rico. Wow. Very quite good. amazing. Very, yeah, and yeah. actually, you know, I got up since I came back from India live, there have been a request of uh, both by Abbott as well as a Medtronic uh, uh, country team uh, to uh, make a dedicated evening session. And they, they will have a direct link. Uh, they want to make it an auditorium and uh, announcement. So I'm, we are getting there. So there could be uh, anywhere from 30 to 100 interventionists uh, will be attending our, uh, it's not started. There were several. Are you pulling back or no? Yeah. Several similar references at the CIT, the China the International plan. Therapeutics Meeting yeah. in uh, Beijing last week also. Yes. That okay. the intent is to make it as a part of large uh, journal clubs and uh, gathering of uh, fellows yeah. uh, benefiting yeah. okay, together. Okay, there we are. You have the Cirque stand. Slow down. Yeah. Yeah, show both. Now, this is the ostium now. Yeah. Good stand expansion. Left main. Could be a little more expanded there in the left main, or you're yeah, happy? I think we're good. Yeah, left main, okay, take the new one, but more important, we need to show the LED, and we are reaching our time. We got two minutes. LED what? Uh, the iOS of the LED. No, the whole I question here is iOS of the LED. Okay, wait. Yeah. I'll put the same wire back. I would not leave it alone. Yes. It looks good. Yeah, the same wire. Pull it back, and uh, goes. only question remained, it goes to the same strut. Yes, once you have the curled up, absolutely. For our viewers, uh, please watch our peripheral interventions broadcast next Wednesday, Good. March the 28th. Okay, okay ready? Session number two. Good. Pull back now, again. what was the lumen of the ostial? I mean, minimum lumen of the LA, the left she main. She cannot. Let's do the left pull back the No, she has done it. What's the? Okay. Do we have one area of the left main which seems to be less expanded? Can we get to that area? And yeah. what is the minimum lumen there? So we want a lumen of at least eight. 8.5. The data has shown that your lumen for the left main PCI right should be 8.5. Right okay, there, there, there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What is the lumen? No. What is going on? We are a little new fancy. Uh, I was, uh, uh, you know, now we need to read software. the protocol. Yeah. <laughs> new software for the Boston Scientific uh, Eagle Eye. Can we measure the lumen in this case, please? <laughs> we need to. <laughs> no, right there, exactly yeah. right Good. there. How no. much is it? 6.5. Huh? May have taken them a moment, but beautiful software. Yeah. 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 Well, one on the top, move it further. At Up. 1 o'clock. At 1 o'clock, you have that? to go to outside. Yeah. 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 I think it needs more expansion, yeah. no? No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. Go further out. Yeah, a little bit uh, right around the 2 o'clock position needs yeah, to be more. Exactly. That will probably take you into 7.5 or something. Okay, good. Six now let's do the LED now. Pull back. Yeah. Okay. Now we are ready for the next. Uh, okay. Start. Size of the left main. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now going into the show the floor. That's a very important now. Now very important here. We want to make sure that LED stand is abutting with our resolute integrity. It's a Zion V. The okay, Zion's there, there, kissing there. the resolute integrity. You just passed that there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Looked all right there to me, but we'll have to probably. We'll see it again. Yeah, but here yeah. there is. Comes out. Good. So now let's just stop it. Okay, let's see that ostial LED, uh, uh, please. Yeah. Because that's where the question is. If we need to dilate something. Um, yeah. yeah. Go further. No. A little bit. Yeah. No, but we can we play it a little bit? I'm done. It's a little before that. Yeah. Issue. No. Okay. We were in the LED before we come into the left main, before the bifurcation. Okay. Wait one second. We are going to tell you where to stop. Right there. Good. Stop now and go back a few frames. Back. Back. Keep going back. Little more. Little more. Yeah. Right Good. about there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look at this. Beautiful lumen. Yeah, this one. Right. The actually uh, looks very good. This will be definitely 7 plus. Yeah. This is the ostial. 
So the basically you can see there that even if when we had an initial gap before we put the resolute stent, there was a gap at the ostial LED, but by kissing balloon dilatation, struts of the resolute have gone into the ostial LED. So now they are abutting the uh, zines uh, and uh, giving a very nice lumen at the ostium about 8 millimeter. So that fantastic. Now, I think, I think the measurement is even more than that, uh, yeah. slightly between yeah, 2 yeah, to 5 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Fires are out. Yeah. So now, let us uh, only question remain that do we need to do a final dilatation of the mid left main? Take a right. picture now. Yeah. Because that segment by yeah. Ivers was still not fully. Yeah, it is not 8. It is about 7, but it is not 8.5. That is what you prefer. Yeah, but but the uh, left main is not that. Uh, Size yeah. of the left main is not that big. No, I don't think. will be okay. Now, floro. Now, question comes is because what has been shown by the data that in the bare metal stand when you put a left main need 8.5. Probably with the DS you may not need 8.5. Uh, but Back the, I would still say that once you are doing the IWAS guided left main, you definitely want to get to solid uh, 7.5 and so uh, and so. No, they are not there. Ready? Okay. I would say that uh, the to us the IWAS is the angiographic and then we decide for the IWAS. Here. Yeah. I think you tell me now. Very hard to make out in this projection. I yeah. think. Uh, looks very good. Looks very good. Yeah, I think if we have taken everything together looking fantastic, uh, will be reasonable uh, to uh, stop here because we got exactly on our time uh, at uh, 9 o'clock. We started at 8. And uh, let us take a last picture here and then make a decision and then we are done. Good. Looks wonderful Good. in this view. Good. Then I think that is it. Samin, uh, final closing uh, points from yep. uh, you. Uh, to me, there are two themes for yep. today. Our, uh, our deep condolences uh, to the family of Dr. Hotzler and congratulations to you for uh, achieving exceptional results uh, with uh, Mount Sinai within the new results yep. from the New York State. Yep. And uh, just take a last uh, take home message, New York DES and left main PCI as you have, uh, we have gone through that Zion's prime and resolute integrity in my opinion will be the best strength uh, uh, available uh, and will be used uh, and of course uh, the comparable data there is one data did show uh, higher strength thrombosis in the resolute all comer trial but a second trial did not show that. And second unprotected left main lesion with a syntax score less than 33. Uh, seems to have good outcome and uh, done properly PCI like uh, here which we, we showed. In this particular case, we also had done the platelet inhibition and this patient platelet inhibition is 230 with a 40 percent inhibition. So, that completely fine with the dose of Plavix patient has been taking. So, with that note, we conclude our this morning uh, live webcast. Samin, thank you so much. Uh, once again, I want to thank uh, all the international viewers. Uh, thank you for your interest, your questions, your encouragement and for your support. Uh, we will see you during our next broadcast, April 17th. Till then, thank you so much and goodbye.